Zelda's Drag Idol has become one of the biggest events on Church Street since its debut in the winter of 2003. With sold out seasons and standby lines pouring out the doors, Fab TV thought it was time to get front row seats and see what all the fuss is about. coming to Drag Idol and why do you keep coming back? I have uh, come for the last three seasons and I come for the good performances toward the end as opposed to the shit performances towards the front. And who's your favourite contestant from uh, The Batch this year? Oh, heroin. And why heroin? Because she makes me feel so good. The show pretty much runs like any episode of American Idol except in place of Seacrest we have the ever glamorous misconception and instead of one crazy, nonsensical lunatic judge, we have two. And they don't exactly hold back. It was so long, me and George were almost bonded. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh. I've been drinking an alcohol a lot this season. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been lying about it. I said, I saw what you did. <laughs> Face theft? Okay, keep cold, not so much. <laughs> Oh, you're not peeing yourself? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was disco, y'all. Give me, give me, give me a god after midnight. Girl! But tongue lashings aside, what exactly does it take to become a Drag Idol contestant? We asked Fab's very own diva and 2009 Drag Idol finalist, the delicious heroin marks. And I can get up! <laughs> How did you start doing that? Um, I started doing drag. I did it once for Halloween, and then a, the friend who painted me needed me to do backup for her numbers, and then actually I really started taking it seriously last year at Drag Idol. And how did you go last year in Drag Idol? I came in third last year. Was that your motivation for coming back this year, or did you kind of... I also work here, so I'm kind of forced to do this. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I'm thinking, why not give it my all and try it for this year as well. And how do you choose the song? Um, I spend a lot of time on YouTube and neglect friends and relatives. <laughs> That's how I come up with it. What advice would you give someone considering entering? What's the, what's the big tip? Um, shave your back. <laughs> Good advice, sound advice. Thanks very much. Very much Thank you very much. After all the contestants have taken to the stage, the audience votes for their two favourite performers. And the two with the least amount of votes, unfortunately, have to pack their wigs away and go home. <laughs> Zelda's Drag Idol runs for a few more weeks with the grand finale on March 24. So if you want to check it out before then, make sure you give Zelda's a call and make a booking. Now, from guys who are trying to tuck it away to ones that kind of just let it all hang out, Good Handies presents the Dirty Sexy Friday Party on the first Friday of every single month. With go-go dancers and porn stars and a pretty sexy crowd themselves, Fab TV's Donovan and I headed over last month to check it out. Owner of the Planned Sexual Playground, Todd Klink, talked to us a little about how the now infamous Dirty Sexy Party came to Good Handies. We've been uh, open for two and a half years and uh, as we evolved and uh, got involved with different groups, we started working more with promoters and uh, as a sex positive space, uh, Dirty Sexy Party came to us and they said they wanted to do a party a little different than what we've been doing, uh, bringing in American porn stars and uh, it seemed like a good match. Legendary party. 
What's the website? It's undisclosed at the moment. Can I have it later? Yes. You will All have right. a private password. Alright. I won't share it, I promise. <laughs> but if you could sleep with anybody, who would it be? A guy named Donovan Krill. <laughs> We're gonna edit that one out. Yeah. <laughs> and is your favorite porn star Guy Parker? Yes, he is my favorite porn star. He's pretty fair. <laughs> History, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> and so we've um, found magazines just don't take your sex survey. It was the first ever one. And there's a few questions in there that we've been getting some pretty interesting responses on. One of them is, what's the most unusual place you've ever had sex? Now I'm sure this is something you'll be able to give me a fabulous story about. <laughs> oh Lord. There's probably so many to choose from, right? Now you'd think for a porn star this question would be relatively easy, but apparently it's not. The good news is we did get an answer in the end. Well, one of the hardest is when I'm like having sex like somewhere where I can get caught or something like where people are walking by and around in the backseat of a car or something like get down. What, <laughs> what do you think it is the fascination with people getting caught having sex? It's a rush. It's an adrenaline rush. I like it a lot. It kind of makes the whole thing more exciting. It kind of makes it all, all the better, right? And so you're you're here for the dirty, sexy party. Um, are you? Yes. And you're excited. Like, I mean, what, do you have anything special planned for the night, or is it a secret at the moment? Uh, I guess it's a secret. Whatever comes, comes. I don't know what I'm doing it exactly, but I know I'm getting naked. That's good. Well, thanks very much, and um, good luck with the show. Right, what happens next is just a bit too hot for Fab TV. So to see what or who goes down, head over to the next Dirty Sexy Party this Friday, March 6th. For more details about this and other hot events in Toronto's gay scene, click on the listings tab on the FAB website. Well, that's it for this edition of FAB TV. Make sure you pick up a copy of the latest FAB magazine. It's on stands now, featuring an exclusive interview with the gay characters of Project Runway Canada, as well as part two of FAB's gay sex survey results. I'm Ryan. We'll see you next time.